Hi guys, it's JR. We live in a society full of glittery dreams. Vivid images, exciting adventures, luxury lifestyles, all made possible and amplified by the invention of social media and Photoshop. Making social lights and TV series such as Inventing Anna. I do not have time for you. People can be famous for being famous or famous for being stupid. More than any time in the history of humankind are we allowed to present ourselves to the world through the lenses of our choice. Or filters. You know what they say, fake it till you make it. So is it wrong for us to try to live a better life by purposely showing the better side of ourselves? Hard to tell. Hard to tell. But here, let's look at this from another perspective. Can we fake ourselves into being more confident, happier, more mentally fit, and as a result, more successful? In this sense, can we fake it till we make it? And the answer is yes. And that comes with scientific proof. It's already verified that personal happiness leads to personal success. And the individual success somewhat lies in the primordial part of the brain, which assesses and calculates where you stand in the outer world. Professor Jordan Peterson takes lobsters, for example. Yes, lobsters. Apparently, lobsters have a nervous system that is easy to observe and has helped scientists to understand the correlation between the brain and behavior of more complex animals such as humans. So lobsters, much like humans, they fight for dominance in their world, under the sea. Under the sea. Under the sea. <laughs> Somehow I saw that coming. However, when a lobster loses a battle, it loses its will to fight further. While the victor lobster spreads its limbs, wheels around its claws, making it look bigger and more ferocious, the loser lobster cringes and scrunches up. And even more surprisingly, radically, its brain dissolves and grows a new one, one that is more submissive, one that is more adequate to deal with the situation and position that it's now in as a loser. Like literally, a loser. Whether the lobster presents itself as a winner or loser highly depends on the ratio of two chemicals released in its brain, serotonin and octopamine. The loser's brain increases the ratio of the latter to the former, and so it's wired to stay in its own domain as being a loser. And that's to refrain from further clashes with other lobsters that might get them injured or even killed. Sadly, the weaker lobster eventually will quit trying and accept its new lowly status. And as shocking as this may sound, we humans are not exempt. Our brain sophisticatedly monitors how we're treated by others, where we are positioned in society, and accordingly, it adjusts the way we walk, talk, and present ourselves to the world. And that external behavior further strengthens the existing perception of ourselves. It's a feedback loop that can go both ways, either up or down. Winner's gonna keep winning, winning, winning. Who's just gonna keep losing, losing, losing? Now, the good news is, there's always good news, or else this would all be way too dark. Excuse me! The good news is, the mind is elastic. Like, honestly, it's something called neuroplasticity. In plain words, we can change. We can change how the brain works through experience. We can change how the brain works through lots and lots and lots of practice. And sometimes you can use this little trick for the quick fix. You see, the mind and body is a two-way street. We all know that the mental state can influence our behavior and health, but it can also work the other way around. Our behavior can affect our mental state. To be more specific, it affects the chemicals released in your brain. Professor Paul Ekman has conducted decades of research on the correlation between emotion and facial expression. In his book, he states that if you make certain movements on your face, it'll trigger changes in your physiology, both in your body and in your brain. Namely, if you purposely put on a sad face, you drop your mouth open, you pull the corners of your lips down, you raise your cheeks and your eyes squinting, at the same time look downwards with your upper eyelids droop, and all of a sudden, you feel this sink in your chest. You feel emotional. You feel sad. While looking pretty scary. It's quite amazing how this works. And so if you put on a smile, I like my school, I like anything. You know what that can do for you. Stand up straight, pull your shoulders back, push your chest out, wear a smile on your face, and tell yourself, things may be in a slump, but today's gonna be a good day because I'm a good person. Sounds cheeky, and it is, but that affects how you see yourself and how others perceive you. And it feeds back into that internal-external loop that we were talking about, adding effect to effect. 
Bill Beswick is a renowned sports psychologist who's been working with numerous athletes and sports teams. He said, psychology is a battle of you versus you. We think the opposition's over there in the other dressing room, but actually it's in here. Who am I going to be today? Am I going to be my best self or my weaker self? Bill has Parkinson's disease, and he says that getting up in the morning, getting dressed isn't easy for him. And so every morning he has to make this decision. Am I going to be a fighter today, or am I going to be a victim? Kylian Mbappe is one of the top-notch strikers in the football world. However, if you compare him to the likes of Ronaldo or Messi, many football fans would agree that he has some big shoes to fill. Before matches, Mbappe talks himself up to stoke his self-belief. He tells himself, I am the best. In regards of his ego and the comparison to Ronaldo and Messi, he once told reporters, they are better players than me. They have done a billion more things than me. But in my head, I always tell myself I'm the best because that way you don't give yourself limits and you try to give your best. Rather than showing off to the world expecting recognition, it's about presenting yourself to convince yourself and bringing out the best of you. One last story for today. I love this little story of one of my favorite directors, Clint Eastwood. Well, do you, punk? He was playing golf one day and his partner asked him, Clint, how old are you? I'm 88, I'll be 88 next Monday. Wow, that's great. Uh, what are you doing lately? Well, I'm shooting a new movie. The movie was The Mule, by the way. And his partner's like, how do you keep doing this? And Clint says, I wake up every morning and go out and I don't let the old man in. Don't let your age, your social, financial status, a harsh setback, bad experience define who you are. Don't let any of that hold you down. In this sense, I would say, fake it till you make it. Stand up straight, chest out, chin up high, wear a smile, dress up nice, and tell yourself today, today is not gonna be a good day. It's gonna be a great day. I wish you the best. Peace. Thank you.